and streaming giant Netflix and social media giant TikTok will also suspend videos in Russia. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a mm, manageable Monday, I suppose. For many people, it means going back to work. For many people, it's just another day of the week. But in general, Mondays usually stink unless you work retail and that's your day off. But that's neither here nor there. The technology companies of the world have seemed to band together to um, apparently end the conflict in Russia and... I'm not sure how I feel about their tactics. It's a lot of virtue signaling, a lot of nonsense. But companies like Netflix, TikTok, Visa, MasterCard, I'm going to look at, a, at, at the full list of companies that have now basically said like, hey, we're suspending operations in, in Russia. But the reality is, I'm not sure that this, first of all, does anything uh, unless they think that it's going to apply pressure to their leaders and, or to, to the citizens to kind of overthrow leadership. Um, are they suspending operations in China where there are literal terrible things happening every single day? No. Are they being pushed by our government? I don't know. But it's, it seems an odd thing. Now, obviously, I don't know every Russian citizen, nor do I know every Ukrainian. Certainly 100% of the Ukrainian viewers that I have that have reached out obviously don't want this conflict. But also, every single Russian viewer I have that has reached out has said that they don't want this conflict either. That, that, that you know, they're saying that, you know, hey, nobody here wants that. And, and obviously they don't speak for everybody, but that said, you know, it... I just think of the citizens, the innocent, you know, civilians on both sides who don't want this. And I'm not sure that punishing them really does anything. Not to mention everyone will just use VPNs and download everything anyway. Netflix suspends service in Russia. Netflix has suspended its service in Russia to protest the country's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Earlier this week, the streaming service had announced that it would pause all future projects and acquisitions from Russia, joining a growing list of companies that have cut ties with the country. Netflix had four Russian originals in the works, including a crime thriller directed by Dasha Zuk, which was filming and had since put on, been put on hold. Netflix also recently refused to carry 20 Russian free-to-air propaganda channels that it was required to host under Russian law. Now the company is taking an additional step and shutting down its service entirely. Given the circumstances on the ground, we have decided to suspend our service in Russia, a spokesperson for Netflix said. All right, well, let me tell you this. Uh, I think everybody knows how to use a, a VPN. So I'm not sure what this really does. The economic blowback that Russia has faced in the wake of its decision to go invade Ukraine has been intense. Not only the country is grappling with extensive sanctions, but many corporations and organizations have pulled out of Russia. Companies like Microsoft, Apple, and Dell have announced that they have suspended sales in the country, while IKEA has closed stores and Nike says it will no longer fulfill online orders. Oh, Nike, yeah. I guess a little less work for those slaves that you have making your shoes in China. On the entertainment front, all major studios have announced they will stop releasing their films in Russia. Netflix is somewhat a newcomer to Russia. It launched back in 2016 where Netflix also recently announced that it would make a 2015 documentary, Winter on Fire, Ukraine's Fight for Freedom, available to watch for free. The nonfiction film centers on Euro Maiden protests in Ukraine, which were sparked by former president Viktor, I can't pronounce that, Viktor Yanukovych, mm -hmm, decision not to sign uh, an agreement with the European Union. Now, on top of this, we have TikTok. 
TikTok suspending new content, live streaming on platform in Russia. We saw this with Twitch too, where certain creators uh, were unable to access their account and continue streaming because, well, reasons? I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that I'm a wholly behind punishing the citizens of an entire country because of the actions of their government. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, it's certainly an empty gesture from these corporations who continue to do work with China, which is just as bad, if not worse, than Russia. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you really cared about human rights, then you wouldn't be doing business with China. Disney, if you really cared, you wouldn't be making Chadwick Boseman rest in peace, you know, wear his mask in the Black Panther film or to uh, shrink, and, and shrink and put black characters from Star Wars, Finn, on the back of the poster. So this is just virtue signal. But what's really interesting to me is TikTok, which is technically Chinese-owned, now maybe, um, you know, maybe uh, this is the because they had to technically get like some ownership in the United States or it's really weird that TikTok, a Chinese owned company would put this out there. TikTok said that in light of Russia's new quote, fake news law, we have no choice but to suspend live streaming and new content to our video service there. TikTok has suspended new content and live streaming abilities on the platform in Russia because of the country's new law. In a statement, TikTok said the safety of its employees and users is of the highest priority. TikTok said that in light of Russia's new law, we have no choice but to suspend live streaming and new content to our video service in Russia while we review the safety implications of said law. Our in-app messaging service will not be affected. We will continue to evaluate the, you know, I think it was weird that TikTok did anything. But again, it's a Chinese-owned company. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Now we have even more companies, right? PayPal, as of March 5th, the CEO of PayPal says if PayPal has shut down its services in Russia, setting UK in aggression. Thank you, PayPal, for your supporting. We also have Adobe. Now, again, how much of this can just be, you know, <laughs> pirated? I, I don't know. I guess these days, you know, when I was younger, I knew more about it. Um, now everything's got a live service. Like my Adobe Premiere, I, I own the same version of Premiere for like 10 years because I don't really do any editing. I just, you know, cut off like the beginning and end of my videos and, and, what, and whatever. But now it's all like live service. I don't know how you, if, if people are getting around that or not. I assume they are. But when you have PayPal, Adobe, um, Epic Games, again, another Chinese company. Epic is stopping commerce with Russia in our games in response to the invasion of Ukraine. We're not blocking access for the same reason other communication tools remain online. The free world should keep all lines of dialogue open. Snapchat. As a safety precaution, we have temporarily disabled the Snap Maps heat map of the public snaps in Ukraine. Well, that's fine. That makes sense. I, I don't know. Like, are they just getting a few tweets? I tried to and and um, and failed to like really try to cover this and understand everything at, at Jump Street. But what I can say and what I feel like I can do a better job covering is I'm not sure why. I'm not sure actually what this does. It gets some likes and retweets. Here's some more brands. Samsung. A growing number of tech firms have said they are suspending shipments to Russia including companies that the country relies on for both tech components and products, including smartphones, PCs, and servers. Tech analysis says, while I doubt the halt of Russian sales will be permanent, I could see it lasting beyond the end of the war, which would be very detrimental to Russian business and the overall economy. You know, part of me, you know, like, part of me likes this move because I'd rather... Russia stop invading, at least it is in my opinion, an invasion. Some people may disagree, but it's like, maybe this pressure applies pressure to get the guy out of there. I don't know. 
But what I do know is that, you know, sticking it to the Russian citizens who don't want any part of this doesn't make any sense to me. It seems like NPC behavior, like empty behavior, because none of these companies, you know, when it came to light that China has like literal camps full of Uyghur Muslims, I can't think of a major company in the United States that had anything to say about it. Nike didn't have anything to say about it, did they? They're fine with concentration camps as long as, you know, it's, you know, Muslims. I don't know. So, you know, to me, I don't think that these companies care at all. Netflix, TikTok, Airbnb, Ikea, Hermes, Volkswagen, Alcoa, H&M, Grant Thornton, Airbus, Boeing, ExxonMobil, Apple, Ford. I mean, you know, MasterCard and Visa, that's like crippling people's ability to buy groceries. You know, I, I don't know. I, I don't think these companies actually care. And like, really, you're making the, the innocent civilians who don't want anything to do with this suffer the most. You think Putin cares? He's got, you know, people in the government care? It's like, just like over here in, in the United States, like when, you know, the, so you had like that clown, uh, um, George Takei. Think well, Americans can just you know basically suck it up and pay more money uh, because you know we can. Well, yeah, the guy's worth fifteen million dollars. He can say that, but you're cutting this off. Google, BP, Equinor, you know FIFA. I mean, this is uh, definitely coordinated. I don't know if our government has anything to do with it. I would suspect they do, um, but I, I don't think that you know doing this to the entire civilian population of a country makes a lot of sense i think that these companies don't actually care i think that there's probably more to it that we're not seeing where they're being incentivized or like disincentivized to not do it sort of thing that's my opinion i'll be interested to hear what you think you know my opinion they couldn't care less they really don't care if they cared they wouldn't do business with russia in the first place or they wouldn't do business with China in the first place, or North Korea, or wherever. We all know these soulless corporations are willing to look the other way uh, in perpetuity as long as the money's coming in. So when they do it now, I just find a hard time believing they care whatsoever. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be looking forward to your responses in the comment section down below, and we'll talk to you again real soon.